Ah, new new screen, who dis? I'm 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 here, I'm in the host seat for a reason. Hi, welcome to the Immaterial Gamers Podcast. It's it's your boy Ryan, and I am joined by Hello your Ryan. Your boy. Oh, hey, yep, it's it's Darius. Hello, Darius. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. And what the heck has happened to your screen? Um, just, just, just vamp for a second, Darius, while I do some magical. Oh yeah, it's probably because you've sat forward, not sat, not sat down. There you go. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm on the hosting duties uh, this this week, and uh, like I said, I've got Darius with me because um, we had some uh, you know, unfortunate news 24 hours. Before the before the podcast, your usual host Terry is unfortunately not here due to due to bereavement. So we at Immaterial Gamers wish him the best, and we just hope you know, that everything will be okay. And uh, we'll keep an eye out on him. Don't you worry, because that's what that's what we do. We're friends and all that. So uh, so with that. Darius, don't, 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 don't keep too much of an eye on him, man. That, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be weird. That'd be. Two. I've got two eyes. You got two eyes. All oh, right. Okay. Well, I think mean, you know he'll appreciate the fact that you'd be keeping two eyes on him. That'll, that'll, that'll be, that'll be fair. So, um, yeah. So with, with that, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more unprepared than usual. Even, even with a bit of notice that would be that we've taken over. Um, this week, I haven't found any news, but we'll we'll get to we'll get to news. There is something um, regarding NFTs, so um, you'll expect a good old laugh from me, and um, you know we'll be able to we'll be able to do that. Um, but Darius, how how's it going, mate? Um, you've not been on for a, for a couple of weeks, so um, I'll just I'll just leave months. you to it for a second. How's how's things? Going? Yeah, months. Is it months? When was the last time you Maybe were on? even. Don't know. I don't keep a track of it, so. Ah, yeah. Oh, you don't keep a track of it. I don't keep a track no. of it. I think, you, to be honest, I think the last time you were on was the last time I was hosting or something like that. So, uh, you know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. God, it actually was it. Was it? it no, it can't have been when we were talking D and D. It can't have been. Because that that would make it about yeah, that would make it about two months ago. I think so. It was something like that. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Right now, I, feel like I don't. Old. I don't recall. I don't recalling by being after that. Ah. Uh, oh. Well, hey, we can talk about a little bit of D and D today as well. So we can. Not? We can talk. Yeah, we can talk about a little bit about D and D. Um, in fact, actually, why don't you just have a, a little talk about it now? You might as well. I know we. You know we don't usually. We don't usually do what's been played and stuff like that. But now. I'll let you. I'll let you do the announcement while I just drink from this comically large bottle of Pepsi. Other soft drinks. Over so, there. as long as I talk, you have to. T- you have to drink. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are preparing a D and D session, basically a full campaign with me as a game master, uh, for which I am uh, still not. Fully, it's all right. You don't have to keep drinking because I cannot. <laughs> Honestly, I was just getting to the point. I was just like, "Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. I got the first big, first got the first big chugs out of the way." And then it was just like, "Oh no, the bubbles are good." It was like, so yeah. So you talked um, about the D and D campaign that you've you started setting up. Yes, uh, we. Well, I'm planning to planning the full campaign for Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, hello. However, uh, with a little bit of my own personal twist. Yes. And, and few things which I've seen online, which might work with us as well. Yeah. So, as because I'm not really high level dungeon master, mm-hmm. let's call it. Um, I try to put some boundaries or restrictions. To people, what they can do, what they cannot do, at least for the beginning, so that they do not break the whole um, scenario, which I do have prepared. And also, it will be a little bit different. Each of the player will have his own secret 
so that nobody else can know about it. Mm-hmm. And as my, and as the story, will, what my character does in the local taverns will be kept. Safe. And as the story oh, and as the story will progress, certain events will try to reveal those secrets, mm. and it will be your job to keep them secret, to lie to your party members. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I can easily I can easily do that. Uh, so uh, we are right now in the process of creating characters. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm trying to like get people to send me who they want to be, uh, with basic characteristics. Then we can we are meeting up in the tabletop simulator, discussing some few things one on one. Right. In sec- in secret, Ooh. get the roles, get everything else. And then I'm gonna provide a link to our character sheets where every, where everything will be stored, so everyone can easily keep a track of everything. I found this very good um, Excel file. I don't remember the uh, who designed it, but really great job. I'm really happy I found it, mm. and we can use it. Well, we can credit uh, it once, once you know. Oh, definitely we will, uh, because. It, for us, it will be really helpful to like everyone can keep seeing their own page, and I can in the same time in real time. I can jump from one player to another to make sure uh, everything is as it should be. Okay, cool. That'd be great because I've been really looking. It's been you know it's been a long time since I've been able. Um, since I've been able to 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 actually roll characters in my D and D player's handbook, and uh, oh shit, this isn't the player's handbook, is it? Uh, no, this is a cookbook. Ah, yeah, I was wondering why. Yeah, I was wondering why my book was telling me to roll characters and discussing dietary notes. Anyway, um, <clears throat> sorry, that was that was that was one. Bad. Well, it was one awful improvised joke that I did there, but um, you know, we'll we'll do it. Um, by the way, just before we before we continue as well, um, Ryan Ryan's an ass. In his in his own head, we we do we discussed the reason why 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 Terry's not here, but let's let's, let's get make it clear the bereavement also affects another immaterial gamer in the uh in the form of Duncan. So apologies about that. I'll just get that out of the way as well. And cover that, and we wish them both well. So now, now, now that I feel feel foolish, there's there's not so D and I'm really looking forward to that. I'm gonna actually have to look look through 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 your notes and on what I can roll and stuff like that, and I will sort of get back to you as as, as ASAP with that. Um, as I've been a bit. Well, there is there is no rush. There is no yet set time when mm-hmm. we want to start. Yeah, and also it's... we need to like schedule on one certain day during the week when we want to participate in the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we need to um, so... we need to sort of get yeah get that organized. See what what will actually work. What will be either the best day or the least problematic day. Uh, that's exactly, that's the yes. that's the that's the immaterial gamer staple these days, isn't it? What what day is everyone available? Okay, let me ask again. What day is everyone least uh, you know least likely to be not available? <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll go into that. But um, Darius, what you you've been joining us recently? In in um, in some in some that? gameplay that's not that's not D and D related. Yeah. Um, no, this, no, this, this, I mean you know, like you've you've been joining us in something that is L O L related. What's, what's, what's been going well, on? I'm not. I'm not happy about that. No way. <laughs> yeah, you're not happy about it, but you're doing it. You're joining us. Well, if there is no other game which I can play with you guys, then yeah. Well, yeah, we do. We do try to organize organize stuff for play sessions, um, which now seems to have a regular time on a Friday these days. Now we generally we generally start our play sessions at 8 p.m. GMT or in this case 8 p.m. BST because clocks um <laughs> you know that's our that's our show where we play little party games or 
sort of just multiplayer games, either competitively or cooperatively. Recently, for the past couple of weeks, we've been playing Kill Squad, um, the which is a an up to four player um, twin stick shooter with melee characters. So it becomes a twin stick hack and slash. <laughs> um, that sounds good. So you know that's that's something that we've been playing. We've, we 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 did it as a one off play session. We were like, right, there's only three of us. What can we get that doesn't cost us all m- money? Yeah. And it just turned out that me, D, and Steph are all on humble bundle or humble choice. And, and Kill Squad has been on there. Was on there for April's selections. So we just all downloaded it. We're like, oh, we'll we'll give it a go. And yeah, Steph, Steph's right. We do need a fourth at some point because it, you know, like I say, it can go up to parties of four where the difficulty scales, like a lot of these multiplayer dungeon crawler hack and slash sort of stuff. You know, more players, more difficult the game, but generally better rewards for it. And it's got a nice little progression system in 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 form in the form of quests. It also has its usual looter shooter progression system of increasing, or slightly increasing better gear, and a you know a, a a difficulty system that bases off the average of that gear, which in this game they call a vector. So you know, usual usual business. Each each item has a vector. The average of all those items equals your character's vector. Yeah, you know, a bit like you know, Destiny and all and all that jazz. But yeah, we've been we've been enjoying it, and you know we could we could do more to the point that this I should also explain this. This is the last weekday live cast for those who are listening, or those who do see this on Twitch. Uh, starting this Sunday, the the uh, help me uh, the twenty second no fifteenth. Yeah, this Sunday will be 15th. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Yeah, this Sunday, the 15th of May, will be uh, Livecast 197, and going forward, Livecasts will be on Sundays. The VOD and the audio versions of the podcast will still be coming out on a Thursday every week, so it gives me even more more time to just um, procrastinate and not download the copy of the Vod to, um, <laughs> um, but um, you know that works. So in turn, that that gives us a slot for Monday streaming that we can do. Um, there is nothing regular in that point, but it'll just be a case of if any one of us want to do something. I.e., with Kill Squad, we took the opportunity last week to just do a bonus play session. Because we just wanted to get through the game, and we wanted to sort of complete it um, to the point that we didn't want to just be filling it in the play session slot. If there was going to be more, you know, if there's going to be other stuff, we were going to be doing Jackbox games or drink more Glurp, which is still the funniest game I've played in a long time, and is hilarious and just entertaining. I just love the the concept of aliens watching human Olympics and trying to recreate Ooh. it. Um, but they misinterpreted how adverts and sponsors work. So, <laughs> so they they incorporate the, the 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 sponsors into the events. Um, so the 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 the, the big ex- so it's, you know it plays a bit like Quop in a sense. It's a, you you play with a pad. You have to play with a pad. You can't play mouse and keyboard. And your characters have mm-hmm. two ridiculously long arms. And two little nubbin legs, and you control movement by rotating the left and right sticks sort of asynchronously from each other to make your character walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, there's a lot of weird events, but some of the some of the sponsors which are randomly generated in each of the events sort of modify the experience each time. So one that's one that's easy enough to explain is a, a company called Lavish Bath Bombs. They've misinterpreted how bath bombs work, and they use real bombs. So in the events, as you're like doing whatever event you're doing, bombs just drop from the sky and explode, and 
send send you you know everywhere and there's another one called budget bear traps which um removes one of your alien's arms so you can only walk with one arm um you know and, and, and yeah i was gonna say if this if that kind of things will kill you straight straight up straight up or where they're they just you are basically like losing half of your limp and you still keep going with a gross blood all over the place no it's it's it's, it's family friendly it, it's family Aww. friendly there are all these like little cute little aliens that just have like little you know sort of things and they got like balls they're like a weeble um yeah. except they do actually roll they and they don't they they don't really fall down um but yeah so we've been having fun with that on playstation but we want to sort of get back and sort of do the bigger um bigger play sessions so the chat box stuff is always a mm-hmm. um so with us having a pretty much regular time now or a sort of closer to regular time it's sort of easy to do rather than me saying on a friday right when he's around are we doing this at midnight while i'm like absolutely knackered from work or are we doing it at eight o'clock where i have some sort of semblance of what time is you know that sort of stuff and and then we can take sort of like stuff that we may have played on playstation as a one-off and put it on the monday slot so that's how that sort of works but yeah you've been you've been playing league of legends i'm just wondering whether you would appear in team fight thursdays at any point <laughs> no no pressure no no pressure if, I mean, you, fair, if you're to willing fair, to carry if you're I'm... willing to carry me then carry the team basically well, well we did well we did did we see that last scion game in Aaron? I'm a scion and I'm here to say I'm just going to kill all the minions, just gain tons of health and you'll never kill me anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, we'll just have, you know, there's, there's the, yeah, there's the so fun with that. To be honest, I did have fun playing around with you guys. That's, that's the thing. I mean, honestly, I mean, it, it's it's nice to have that fun and uh, seriously, we'll drive that fun out here. Um, no. <laughs> um, but you know, I I feel at this point we'd need you to well, we'd probably play a bit more of like Aram's off Team Fight Thursday so you don't have to deal with our stupid stipulations and rules. Hello, Jaffa. Welcome to the podcast. You've now just been called out. Uh how how is your evening? I'll say that while we keep going for for a minute. Um my god, so uh oh, I I've got I've got ideas now for role playing not in the yeah. games. Of games that I am looking to, you know, uh, the next RPG to go along, and there's the two, two fold. I think I have my my set. So the first one I'm going to go for is whatever's coming out on Game Pass. Um, oh God, when it's like tomorrow, there's a there's like an RPG that's going to be a pre like a prequel to another RPG that they're going to be bringing out. Um, where are we? So, um, where is it? What's How much is Game Pass it? those days? Game Pass is like eight ninety nine, I think it is, a month. Okay. But but I'm on like on Ultimate, which I think it's like eleven ninety nine because I've got the Xbox as well, so it mm-hmm. makes sense to just you know jump between both. So here we go. Where is it coming soon? Um. Oh Jesus, Euden Chronicle Rising is um so it's like a side scrolling RPG that's available in eighteen hours from when we're doing this podcast. And um it oh it contains mild swearing, but because the game comes out tomorrow, do you know how long I've got to complete it? About a year. Which will be better than what I left myself for Final Fantasy X. Fucking three yeah. weeks. So um, You can do it. You know Jeff 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 is playing, you know, New games. I'm having to play old games. Are you quickly? <laughs> hey, Bob. How far are you? Uh, what's that? How far am I? How far? Yeah, I'm the Final Fantasy. I'm in the end game now. Um, okay. on Sunday stream, I beat my white whale. Um, I beat Unalesca, which is like the sort of the last major boss that you do before going into the end game bosses. One which is basically like four bosses back to back in in quotations. It's like you're basically on an airship and you've got to take out one fin, then you've got to rest up, take out the next fin, rest up, take out the back of the, the creature and then, you know, sin and then you take on 
you then have a 16 turn timed battle um you basically have 16 turns to beat sin the boss or it one shots your entire party and game's over Which, um, it's, it's not that easy, is it? No, 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 no. Because well, I mean, the, idea, the, games... the idea is like Unalesca is a skill check. Because a lot of the Final Fantasy X bosses were what, and Duncan would have confirmed on this, is that a lot of, a lot of the Final Fantasy bosses, um, particularly the skill check ones, are puzzle bosses as opposed to, you know. If you can grind, you, if you can grind this boss, you know you can you can do this. Like Unaleska has three phases to her, so normally you could just turn around and like you know, all oh, right, this this character's got you know twenty thousand health. All right, cool. You took twenty thousand health out by using all your overdrives. The limit breaks of the game. Oh wait, hold on. It summoned a new a second phase, and now she has forty thousand health. Uh, well, my overdrive's gone. Oh no. What now? Um, you know, or like that. It's like, oh right, I've, oh, oh, I've just, I've just managed to get through this, this second phase is forty thousand. Oh no, she's back with sixty thousand health. Help! Um, you know, and if you don't do the stuff correctly, like in this case, the the they use the zombie status effect, which means that as a zombie, you still take damage from getting hit, but you also take damage every time you attempt to heal. The healing actually yeah. kills you. Um and so that's that's a problem. However, in her third phase, she casts a skill called Mega Death, which kills anyone who doesn't have the zombie status effect. So well, usually you have to cast what zombie beforehand, isn't it? Yeah, you have yeah, you have to like have the zombie status afflicted. Wait for Mega Death to be cast. Then remove the zombie effect so you can all heal each other before she casts it again. And it's like, oh god, yeah, that's great. Uh, what I've done is probably overleveled and um, just used a, an overdrive, uh, used an Aeon to summons and just um, <clears throat> wiped her off the face of the earth. I also just took Walker and just, uh, you know, blitz balls everywhere. So you know, that's that's all. That's all. It's all great. Um. So, uh, the yeah. Final Fantasy games were never the easiest ones. I mean, yeah, you can definitely complete them. However, if you want to prank the difficulty or not, mm. uh, like I was trying to be the first boss in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mm. I, yeah, Final Fantasy VII that, Remake I'll, is like a different beast to seven anyway. After an hour, I just gave up, basically. Ooh. I couldn't defeat the boss on hard difficulty, and I was level 47 out of 50. Mm. I figured, I figured, yeah, I will catch those other three, uh, three levers as I restarted the game, isn't it, basically? Like, game plus. Mm. Uh, no, not that chance. So I think it's like you said, it's a kind of like a puzzle. I will have to time it correctly. The attacks. I will have to equip appropriate materia, mm. appropriate limit breaks, uh, um, weapons and accessories to make it work. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of yeah, a lot of Final Fantasy bosses also come under. Um, preparation. So yeah. prep, prepping a fight before doing it is is very important. You know, in, in Final Fantasy, I've learned that very much in Final Fantasy X. If you're going to be going into a massive boss, and you haven't set up your overdrives for your party and your aeons, you are not giving yourself the best chance. If you set up all your aeons and your party to all have their overdrives. You've leveled out the playing field a little bit. If you've over leveled like I have, yes, you've just shit on the on the bosses, but still, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I've got a few days left to complete the damn game before it goes off Game Pass forever. I'm going to give myself every advantage I can you get. Can. 
So, you know, I want I want basically my last stream of Final Fantasy X to basically be story mode. <laughs> Just like I am here to finish off the story. Let's go. So, uh, you know, that's how it works. Okay, I'm just looking at the chats, and it says that Jaffa is uh, trying out Raid Shadow Legends. I have also played Raid Shadow Legends. If you enjoy, if you enjoy it, cool. For me, not so much. Just something about the auto battling and the the gacha mechanics and stuff. It's it's it's, it's mobile fair, and it. I don't know, a lot of mobile stuff has sort of messed me up a little bit. I mean, I'm trying to play and enjoy Puzzle Quest 3 at the moment, which people are everywhere are saying it's a great game. I think it's also a great game. Slowed down so much by... Well, you don't have to pay for all these currencies, but... But... <laughs> yeah, it speeds up the experience. It's a time saver. No, I want to play the game, not avoid the game. Time time save is like, yeah, well, well, right. Raid Raid came out on on mobile first. Well, I'm I'm we, fine we're, with we're talking about be, semantics here. To be like, as I said, a speed of the game. That's fair enough. However, I don't like when the developers slowing the game down on purpose, mm -hmm. so you can buy the XP packs. Yeah. I guess I guess what also slightly annoys me about Ubisoft. Was, um, no, Ubisoft. Um, oh, gee, man, I'm sorry. I, uh, did you get? Did you get? Um, did you get some like allergies to microtransactions as well, there, Darius? Sorry, it's, it's, it must, oh, be, yes. must be must 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 be the weather. Must must be the weather. Um, sorry. Um, it's well, it's 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 yeah, spring, so everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is in the air. <laughs> hey, hey, Viva, sinus infections, NFTs, um, you know, just just as 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 it thinks. I think what what also, I guess what also put me off sort of like playing more of Raid was it's adverts, man. YouTube adverts or like in-app advertising that just comes up. It's like. Hey, everybody, I'm here. I'm playing the hot new game that's come from America. It's called Raid Shadow Legends. Please try and level all these multiple characters with over 30 characters to choose from. You can have a really rip-roaring time, and I have not been paid to say this word for word. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Now that... Now the... And that's the reason I'm not downloading any more mobile games, especially if they are advertised. Mm. I mean... <laughs> I, I know that we we are like we are the grain of sand in internet podcasts and Twitch streaming, but I think that there has purely put off any company from trying to press us a script to read and just saying, "Oh, do you want to just here's a here's our brand new game? How much do I get from this? Well, if you if you are an influencer and you get five hundred thousand subscribers, we might give you a rucksack." Yeah, the word the worst word on that is would, is is could. Second word is rucksack. All right, <laughs> Steph, Steph, Steph will shill. <laughs> Steph will shill. Um, well, so. I would not mind getting a rucksack for saying hey, Paul, this is a great game, as long as we will literally enjoy the game. Yeah. Uh, I apologize about the video screen there like that. Sorry, I was just trying to. There we go. So I was just trying to bring up some sort of news. Um, so you you before we talked about the pod before we started the podcast, you talked about because I said that I because of so lack of preparedness, I said I hadn't like brought up any news stories for this week, and you you brought up the Square Enix NFT thing. Of them, um, maybe you did. You did talk was, about Square, yeah, Square was, Enix what? selling off their studios. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, to to join the blockchain craze. Um, yeah, Embracer Group are basically looking at Square Enix and just going, "We we we lowballed you an offer of three hundred million, and you said yes. Are you are you 
Are they? Are they? Are they? Are they mad? Are they? Are they mad? I mean, yeah, sure. We'll yeah, we'll pay you three hundred mil. You know, we're not going to be able to do anything with the. We're not going to be able to do anything with the makers of the highly successful Tomb Raider reboot. You know, we're not going. We're not going to be oh, able to. They do. They do have a really great IP, isn't it? We're not going. We're not going to be able to do anything with the with the company should, that brought well, you Deus Ex. The thing is, I'm not sure if how much you have read into it. Mm. Uh, they selling the whole studios, not only the IPs. Yeah, yeah. So the the studios and the, the studios IPs in any current the project they're working on. Yes, and the stu some of the studios are in debt. So okay, Square Enix is getting three hundred mails in cash, but then the buyer, mm -hmm. which in this case is Embracer. Yes, they will have to inherit 600 million of debt. Okay. But so, if I remember right, Embracer already owns THQ Nordic and Gearbox. Yes. Yes. And they're doing fine well, I at mean, the moment. I mean, exactly. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so it's easy to say, yes, we are selling this for 300 million. No, we are selling it basically for 900 mil. Mm. So which, that's which even... more. That, yeah, even though it's freaking either a lot or not enough, even compar considering that the how much Bungie was bought for. Um. Oh, god. Um. A lot more. Yeah. Yeah. 30, and that's 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 an exclusivity years? deal again by by Sony though. Isn't yeah. It? Which is weird. So, which is weird because Bungie keep keep like getting themselves out. It's like, oh yeah, we're we're Bungie, we're the Xbox crew. We you know we we we're, we're Microsoft, Halo, blah blah blah. What's this? Independence yeah, no. in you know being independent. Oh, sign us up. Here we go. Let's go. Wait, we've been bought that, by Activision. That's what, I, um, that's what I'm thinking. That's why. That's why kind of like Square Enix want to sell that because they do not have the proper idea what to do with the studios with the games. And might be some more internal chaos with the projects. Therefore, mm. they prefer to like sweep it aside. Well, this kind of come up last week when me and Terry were talking about it. In in sort of in regards to, is there something internally wrong going on at Square Enix that they're just going to fire sale their biggest Western IPs? Because uh, we have to say that specifically Western IPs, they're not getting rid of their yeah. internal studios for no. Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy. They're they're staying in house, and I guess to 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 a lesser extent, or to, to a lesser extent, he says to a lesser extent to the highly convoluted Kingdom Hearts franchise. Um, and then again, the mouse probably helps a little bit with some of that. Yeah. Well, as I said. Um... Probably they have their own agenda with it. Mm. Um, they maybe feel better with their own market. Mm -hmm. but, so I mean, that's why they saying the European stuff somewhere. Yeah, I mean, well, what was it that come up on this? Um, Is here? Ah ha ha! Yes. We'll bring up this that since since Square Enix said they were buying it out. Let's just bring up this link here, um, in our in our chat. Um, but it's, it's, it's Kotaku sort of brought this up. Um, that Square Enix bought or went and in principle sold the <laughs> sold the IPs and the studios within twenty four hours of the NFT market being at the worst it's ever been since it started. 92% lower than, you know, its peak, with 85% of its wall of, of the wallets being inactive, according to the Wall Street Journal. Nice. So, you know, in terms of in terms of timing, this could be the worst possible time that Squ that Squeenix could have 
because I don't because I think actually yeah I think me and Terry discussed it on the day that the news came out that Square Enix were doing it because we did we did the podcast on the Tuesday and yeah by the Wednesday what we had discussed was already outdated by Square Enix fucked up <laughs> it is basically the headline that you could have really put spinning newspaper logo Square Enix blanked up <laughs> so you know but yeah um so Jaffa Jaffa is in there just like THQ and Enix selling yeah yeah, so you know, just to just like I say, just to give you the thing on that, that Square Enix were basically getting rid of um, IDOS Interactive, Crystal Dynamics, and who else would have been in that list? There would have been another another studio no. that was in there. Yes, there was the third one. Mm-hmm. There was um, there were three studios. Um... Yeah, IDOS Montreal and Square Enix Montreal, which basically has to. Um, well, has to change yeah. his name. But now that frees up that frees up for a for a competent publisher to work with studios to make Deus Ex, Tomb Raider. I mean, I I'll take it this way. I'll I'll say it now. You know, for as much as Square Enix absolutely dropped the fucking ball on uh, Mankind Divided, I would love to see another sequel to to that lineage of Deus Ex games. I actually quite enjoyed them. I, I oh yeah, especially with the with the new tech which we have right mm. now, uh, that might be really interesting to see anything. Yeah, so, I mean, as long as, as, long they as cannot... doesn't make it. Sorry, go. Oh, on. I was gonna say something, but I bite my tongue. Oh okay. I was gonna say as long as they don't just sit there and just turn Deus Ex into a VR only experience, then then uh, I'm on yeah. board. But no, I was going to say they cannot get worse than. Cyberpunk. However, the cyberpunk is actually it's not that game. It's it's in overall. It's, yeah, it's, it, they it's, had they had really bad start. Yes, definitely the worst possible start start ever. Mm. Oh yeah, but absolutely. on the contrary, yeah, in terms of in terms of in terms of I know because I know this thing is your big CD project actual, red fan. But in in terms of the actual game. It's good. It's not the best. It's not. It will not. Mm. It's not above Witcher Three. Definitely not. I was about to say. I was uh, about to say when your bar, when your bar for, for for comparing CD Projekt Red games is The Witcher Three. Yeah. Then it's you know it's it's a tough thing, and I'll, I'll say this as a person who couldn't quite get into Witcher Three. What little I played of it, I understood as. A competent game and sort of good and good design. It just wasn't for me. Really, yeah. it's just you know that's just just how it is. But no, see, the, the, the thing is, I do love games with story. I prefer to playing single player games with big stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's see on the PlayStation side, um, Beyond the Soul, um, Heavy Rain, uh, Detroit Become Human, mm-hmm. uh, all the Telltale game. That's that's what I'm here for, basically. Mm. Uh, so when they have a big dri- story-driven games, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, so Witcher 3, yes, was a really great big story-driven game. Uh, Cyberpunk was not, but I still enjoyed playing it because I think that that kind of like hacking Cyberpunk theme, that was kind of like first I played cyberpunk kind of game. Yeah, like I'm not cyber, like, many. The, what, like the 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 sort of the world or the, the sort of the concept. The yeah, I've not I've not played many of it. I've mm-hmm. not played many of it. Uh, I did play a little bit of Zeus X, however, I could not get into it. Mm. Uh, so after a few hours, I was just not that for me. Let's let's move to something different. Uh, mm. So. But, overall, uh, overall, overall, it's like Cyberpunk is an interesting game. However, I do think once we will see a new Zeus X, yeah, I it mean, will it should be better mm-hmm. in terms of everything because it just it just fit the premises for it, especially now when we there is a kind of like high demand for Cyberpunk games. Indeed. Indeed. So, Before, yes. Yeah, it's like you know, like I say, it's just it's like I say, 
you know, be all looking forward to it. Like I say, I keep saying, like I say, come on. I wish for just sort of a conclusion to that Deus Ex arc, you know, because there's still a little bit more that, that could go on. So yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll oh, yeah. see what happens. We'll see what happens now that Idos are off the leash again. Then see, you know, yes, cool. exactly. That, I think that's the old, that's a really good thing to for developers for studios mm-hmm. to be independent to be able to do whatever they want because if you start putting the strings on creativity, you just get a medicore results. Mm. Yeah, because. Even even the even the programmers, even the coders, they are artists in their own way. They like to express themselves in the code. So if you start, you know, telling them no, you cannot keep doing it, you have to change this, this, that. Okay, fine, I will do it because you're paying me, but I will not enjoy it. And if I am not enjoying it, it will be crap. Uh, we've got a Jaffa declaration here. Um, bring back Warhammer Online. <laughs> um, yeah, why not? You know what? I would have liked that. You know what? Bring bring back Warhammer Online because what little I played of it during a very small beta test, I actually enjoyed. Um, it's a shame that every other RPG now has sort of um, took the idea of public questing because that was, to me, that was a sort of a unique experience that started for me with Warhammer Online. So the idea of doing your normal RPG stuff of going from A to B, collecting five bear asses and bringing them into you know a quest giver, but the idea of events that would just appear on the map and for people to sort of join and take part and get rewards based on how well they contributed was was a like a very novel notion than than every RPG and their dog took the idea. Currently now you've got you've got um, Rift, which does public events. You've got Final Fantasy fourteen. They do Fates, which are basically public events, you know, and, and stuff like that. So you know, yeah, and and also there was there was nothing better than than having an orc just coming up and just saying, "Who's the boss? I'm the boss." Um, you know, so that that would be that'd be great. I mean, let's be honest, my. My my username, my internet username, if not him again, is you know so inspired by two things. One, it was a name that when people saw me in World of Warcraft, they'd look at me and go, "Oh, not him again." But then when when it's when you know sub, you know when I've done subscriptions on Twitch and stuff like that, and you hear people shouting out, it's like, "Oh, look, it's not him again," and it's just like, "Yeah, there there we go." That just works. And some people just go, "No, not no Timai again." No to Meg again? It's like no, it's not him again. It's like what do you mean not him again? It's like it's just say not him again, but has a Warhammer orc, and you've got it. <laughs> oh, not him again. You know, it just it just it just works like that. Or as because some people played WoW a lot, you just speak like you're um like um what was it like a a human builder. Job done. Not him again. Something you're doing, um, so you know. So that's. So I assume you know, that's that will be your name for for your D and D character. Uh, probably. No, depends. Depends if I roll orc. <laughs> we'll go half orc. Uh, Is that in the Please don't tell me that's in your restrictions. You can choose who you want to be. You don't have to roll for it. Ah, uh, cool. I could look at being a you know like a half orc and just call him no no Tim again. So no, what's your role now? <laughs> I mean, there was there was the other one, the, the immaterial joke, gamers joke. Now it's like no, Tim again. Um. So anyway, yeah, we move on. Before I move on to more news, by the way, I kind of got sidetracked a little bit because we were talking about my rush to complete Final Fantasy X. The other set of RPGs that I was looking at doing, I have Super Giant Games games on the brain mm-hmm. at the moment. So I was just yeah. I was. I was just randomly listening because I was just trying to find some like music to listen to while at work, and I just started getting random video game soundtracks. And one of the soundtracks that came up was the Transistor soundtrack, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's cool." I wonder if there's that's... a Bastion. 
I wonder, if, I wonder if there's a soundtrack for Bastion online. For many, yes, games, for many games they have. Okay, they have quite a few. They have four. Uh, yeah, they have four. I've played three. Which uh, one haven't you played? Pyre. Same. Or at least it's, I've not played uh, it, it to completion it like I played it, the other the other three. Pyre don't like... It's, I don't know. I'm not sold on the idea of that game. I'm not sure mm. why. It just doesn't appear appeal to me that much. However, hey, this completed. Transistor three quarters through. Bastion completed. God knows mm. how many freaking times. Oh, God. Um, yeah. The, I did like Transistor, uh, especially for the first time when, you play, I, when I played mm -hmm. it. However, I get to a certain point when it was too much of a puzzle, a puzzle to go forward. Mm. And I couldn't be asked, and I couldn't be asked googling on it how to oh, beat man. a certain part. It was I was like three quarters of the game, mm. and if I would like to start redoing the game right now, I will have to start playing from the beginning because I don't freaking remember controllers or the story. Yeah, uh, but but that was yeah. We might we, we might we might do a challenge to to do that transistor well, game. Well, this is. Well, I mean, yeah, this was this was the thing that I was looking at, and maybe this could fill the Sunday, like the Monday slot, so I'll do something on this, because I was just considering I can you know can always do with a co-pilot for role-playing not in my game streams. There's so much actually that I've got in my head now. So then you know there's there's finishing off Kill Squad, there's the doing the Danganronpa series with Andrea and D that we need to figure out at some point, and I'm now in my head because my other idea for role-playing not in my games after doing. Um, Euclid and whatever you're doing, Iridan Quar uh, Chronicle is to go through all the Super Giant games in order. Obviously, I'm never gonna, okay. never gonna technically, never gonna technically finish Hades, but you know, because it's a roguelike, it keeps going. But yeah, Bastion, ah, oh, God, I love that game. Um, Transistor, I'm gonna be on the idea of saying that I liked more than Bastion. Which is Did which you? is saying something. Which is saying something because I love Bastion. Um, I, I love I love Bastion. I love the twist at the end. I'm not sure mm. if there is similar twist in Transistor. I do have my idea what it mm. can be. There is. Uh, yeah. There's 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 good story beats. I'll just I'm trying to keep it. So yeah. Well, for you on it's, there, it's good, really. Good I did really like the idea of soul being trapped in the freaking. So in, basically, yeah, in 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 basically and, what is a giant sword like hard drive? Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, a pyre. But yeah, the, I don't think I give. I don't think I give a fair shot. So I'd like to sort of give it another go. I guess this is probably where you're sort of like where you you, you were on this. Is it was so different to what come before, in fact, and what come after? Because basically, let's let's go pyre. Uh, everything but pyre. Is an action RPG of some sort. Some sort. Pyre is well, as 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 the audio producer or the audio director at Supergiant, Darren Corb said himself, it's basically wizard basketball. It's mythical wi wizard basketball, and it's different to all the others. It's not an action RPG. It's a sort of a a sports strategy game with mystical overtones. Yeah. So you know, just I just catching a glimpse of their trailer. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like what I did with the with the Mike Biffle games, because I did all but I think I did all but um, the John Wick game, which I may go back and actually just do. So I went through the entirety of the Biffle games catalog, which was Thomas was alone, volume. Um, subsurface and quarantine circular, and then finished it off with um, with the solitaire conspiracy, which is just very weird because sort of every single one of those games is completely different. Thomas was, was alone was a platformer involving, um, well, four sided shapes with personalities and names, you know, which is just a sort of an odd thing. Um, you know, volume was a stealth game based off, or sort of a futuristic retelling of Robin Hood. Um, 
heard the volume. I didn't play that. But I I I give it a try. There's yeah, certainly give it a try. It's easy enough to pick up. Um, sub subsurface circular and um quarantine circular were basically text based adventure games. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, subsurface was had a had a puzzle element to it. Um, quarantine circular had a had a sort of a choices matter element to it. Um, and it was one of those choices matter games where a choice that you make early on in the game determines your ending a lot later down the line. And solitaire conspiracy, well, it, it's solitaire. It's not the solitaire that you would normally play. It's not the the usual, you know, seven stacks with cards and their uses. Yeah. Um. Or what was it called? What's it called? Crooks and alleys or something like that. Um. So it's a different type of solitaire. And you're like spider solitaire and tri peaks and you know. Well, solitaire like is that. basically trying well, so- to sort things out. Well, solitaire Relax, is just basically single, single player, isn't it? That's what basically yeah. the card game comes down to. But that's that was the variant on it. But I like the idea of a for solitaire card game with a heavy spy theme. Mm-hmm. And it and it had um it had Greg Miller as the as the main like video actor. Well, yeah. Um which it then also had you know, also also had others. Um the name of the um which there's the fact that um Solitaire Conspiracy ties into the volume universe. The, the fact that they, that's that that's the point of it. That's the reason I played them all, because it was basically what I called the Biffleverse. So yes. Thomas was alone was all about AIs gaining sentience. Those AIs were then used in volume to run the the volume, which was the VR sort of the AR headsets, and then they became human um, okay. in the sense that so they became like they got rights just like everyone else, which subsurface and quarantine circular talk about you know much further down the timeline in those games and solitaire conspiracy you recruit one of the decks of cards contains Loxley the protagonist of volume that's why i didn't i remember now that's why i didn't talk, touch john heck uh john wick hex because it's not it wasn't part of the biffleverse unless suddenly john wick okay. helped Loxley out of prison you know <laughs> maybe i'll just have to play it. but yeah that's why I, that's why i did that but what got me into wanting to play um the supergiant games is i'm actually watching the They've been out for ages. I've just not got round to watching them. Yes. But the 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 documentary channel No Clip, they okay. do the video game documentaries. They followed um, Supergiant through the entire early access period of Hades, and did like a it looked like a six part uh, six part documentary called Developing Hell, <laughs> which I, I like the I like these sort of the the you know I like the the context of it. It's just like, oh no, look, it's like development hell. No, 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 no. They're just developing hell because, you know, Hades is and stuff. And it's in so, hell. so I was like, I'm in the I'm in the middle of the second episode of that where they're sort of talking about, you know, they've just they've just launched the game secretly because they didn't announce anything until it appeared on the game awards. And then they're just now they're in the episode just talking about their patching cycle because it's the first time they've ever done something like this. Because they explain with all the three games beforehand, it was basically produce it, take a whole load of time doing it, then and ship there it, you go. and then patch it. You know when there's anything broken, it was a completely different experience for this twenty-person studio to be going through the through the early access route when that's something that probably studios their size would have started with with their first games not what they did four games down the line so I sort of you know enjoyed, enjoyed think, watching that a little bit I mean there's I a, think there's Hades be... is is also more complex than the games beforehand maybe that's mm-hmm. why they kind of like released it on the early access so that people play it let's hear the feedback Let's see what's wrong with the game, what's broken, mm. and keep fixing as we go. Because, as you said, twenty people studio, and 
Hades is a very complex game because you have laws. What do you call them? Buffs. Yeah, and that boons. I think they call them. Then. Boons. The, there the you go. Yeah. So they yeah, had to literally make sure that one do not break the other. Mm. Well, let's think of it this sometimes way you can you, you can you can do many sim, sim you can simulate it a lot on Excel or any other kind of like calculating application. However, once you give it to the people, mm. they always fi- find things to break. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the 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 thing that I had on this, what for me, what made it com- what made Hades more complicated than anything that came before it, was what is it? What's the when you think super giant games? What's the sort of the thing that you think of? What's the first thing you think of when it comes to them? And for me, it's it's Sorry. basically re- reactive narration. And um, yeah. So it's this this sort of like the idea of being told part yeah, of the story sim- yeah. as you experience it, as opposed to just this linear sort of sort of narration. And you know, so Bastion, there's reactive bits that you may never hear because you may never fall off the map. So Rooks, the narrator on that, won't won't explain. Oh, and the kid just fell to his death. Oh, I'm kidding, you know, and stuff like that. And Transistor had the same sort of uh, sort of narration that you were basically being guided through the game as you went. Pyre made things a little bit more complex because of the sort of the whole idea of the of the game. You know, you you're this person who's being exiled for the crime of being able to read. That's your character is called the reader. So it's like your crime, you are punished to life in exile in this underworld because how dare you know how to read? How are we supposed to control someone who can actually read our laws? Um, But you recruit the other exiles in the game and you play this wizard dodgeball, wizard basketball thing with the idea that once you complete it, if you successfully complete it, one of the exiles that you've been nurturing and coaching can then go back into the overworld for the purpose of starting a revolution and ending this stupid practice. And But the idea is that there's so many permutations based on which exiles you, you, know, you get, whether you succeed and fail in each of the matches, whether you actually manage to succeed in getting someone into the overworld and which people you send to the overworld to then cause the end in the game there's so much narration in there and in Hades there's always something new there's new bits of dialogue for every scenario you've got Hypnos basically sitting there and, and, and describing to you the brutal way that you died in the previous run you've got, you've got Hades himself slagging you off for being his unruly child and stuff like that you've got you know, you've got all these these characters, all with this. You know, with tons Nick's, of dialogue. I love the Nyx character. Yeah, there's a Nyx is in there. The 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 Furies, when you fight them. <laughs> yes. Um, even something as simple, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say I don't know. You can say spoiler one enough, but if you played Hades enough, and you know you 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 get there. The the um, Lernian Bone Hydra, the second boss. Once you've fought that enough times, Zagreus gets just the idea of just nicknaming him Lerny. <laughs> and so for every future run, it doesn't say Lerny and Bone Hydra. It just says Lerny, comma, the Hydra. So, that, like, you know, it's just stuff like that just changes as it goes. So, yeah, after... Yeah. After, after that, a thousand runs, I'm pretty sure you will still find something new yeah basically on this point if it's like if you're if you're like say you've played a thousand runs or you know like you say you play you played enough runs you meet zeus and he still provides you a line of dialogue that's new even though you run all your you do all your runs with zeus and and aphrodite as you you know as your two uh gods to to do your run with you know that there's a lot of work on that so you know it's just yeah basically after this rpg i think we're going to go through all these for all these super giant games and just just enjoy them again through you know be be it you know be yeah, the dialogue be it the narration be it the soundtrack just 
not very enjoyable games. Every mm-hmm. single one of them is just. Yeah, like I said, yeah, like Pyre. Pyre just didn't work for us, but no. I'm, <laughs> I'm more than happy to. I'm more than happy to give it another shot. Um, hey, was a basketball shot. Right, so we are. Oh, we are overrunning on this podcast. So I'm going to do. Oh yes, one. we are. So uh, I'm just going to do one, one very, very quick piece of news. I'm not going to talk about the NFT board ape uh, stuff because remember, when it comes to when it comes to NFTs, we do this. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's how that comes along. Actually, yeah, there is one thing. Did you, just to remember that the guy who bought Jack Dorsey's first tweet for two point six million dollars. You know, being unable to make even fourteen thousand dollars for it, and then saying, um, "Obviously, I'm not going to sell it because I need to find someone who's more worthy." Worthy. <laughs> and don't even I try. And you know, if this ends up somewhere in the internet, it, well, it'll be on the internet somewhere. If some NFT crypto bro finds this and goes, you just don't know the benefits of NFTs. And if you can't provide me with one single benefit, why should I care? Smug face enabled. Anyway, um, this is this is a this, on that bombshell. Well, very very quickly, this is a very odd one. Um, I'm going to add it to the list. Um, basically, um, hmm, how's the way of saying this? Personal opinion. Uh, abortion rights or human rights? Simple enough. Uh, Wordle. We know that game. Wordle, the game where you had to guess a five-letter word. And then uh, oh. if you got the letters correct, it would put them in the right place. And you had six attempts to get the five-letter word. Well, it turns out the New York Times, and this, this was in the PC Gamer article um, an hour ago, but this appeared on Sky News earlier on this afternoon. Um, the original answer was due to, was had to be changed. The original word, the New York Times had to be changed, or had to change it. Due to the fact that the word was t- for today was going to be fetus. The New York Times uh, changed this answer uh, due to the current uh, the current ongoing row between the um, you know between the Supreme Court and sane, well-adjusted human beings in regards to overturning their anti-abortion legislation or the the anti-illegal abortion legislation. So um, you know, Supreme Court fucked up people's wordle, just like they're fucking up people's lives. <sighs> Sorry, I've got nothing else to say on that other than no, <laughs> there's nothing o- else to other say other than just... other than you know, other than you know, human you know human rights. Though I guess I guess there is I guess there is the one thing I'll leave on this. There was um someone who posted a tweet a tweet. That you know that talks about. They posted a couple of pictures of, of, fetuses, and they were like, "Tell me, look at these, look at these pictures, and tell me these can, these are you know capable of intelligent life and um, you know able to do stuff." And a user underneath responded, "Yeah, well, they could grow up to be." Um, to which the original poster, then responded with the following. Uh, the images were of a dog and an elephant. And on that bombshell, it's time to uh, time to move to actually our very, very last feature of the, of the thing. Very quickly, here it is. It's a recurring feature. Has anyone here played Elden Ring this week? Me? Um, sorry, oh, that's on. because it was just online. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's the Has anyone here played Elden Ring this week? Uh, Darius. No. Ah, cool. Well, what I'd like to say is also no, um, because the price point's not there yet. Uh, so that was that was our feature. Has anyone here played Elden Ring this week? So uh, seriously, yeah. that's your excuse, price point. Uh, yeah, price point because I'm not paying. I'm not paying know. massively full price for a game that I would probably get frustrated off and throw. Metaphorically speaking, because everything's a freaking download these days, um, so uh, 
yeah, I I guess I just have more fun watching people plug on through that game. People mm. are damn sight more patient than me. And, you know, succeed. So, you know, that's how that works. Right, there, enough false finishes. We're going to wrap the podcast up. So uh, if you enjoyed this, well. please, please, um, you know, share it round around the world um you know if you if you if you've just come in and saw what the hell is this um but you want to see more of it please you know give us a follow on twitch um and you'll know when we're going live we pretty much have a stream almost every day of the week um probably starting from next week we'll most likely have a stream of some sort every day of the week uh, between our group of of crazy human beings um and if you are watching this on youtube instead you can always you know go to the twitch afterwards um but we do have a youtube where we put the vods of the games up plus some original let's play series as well um so still currently the duncan and andrea doing a run through of super mario odyssey in a speed run attempt not an official speed run attempt but a speed run attempt and uh, there's me still plugging through all the fi- uh, the mass effect trilogy um, getting near the end of Mass Effect 2 now. I've almost recruited everyone. And Aris? And soon, D&D. Soon, yeah, soon. D&D, when we can figure it out and get that all sorted. Um, but yeah, we stream mul- we stream different games all throughout the week with variety stuff, you know. Um, so, yeah. And uh, the podcast in audio form is available everywhere you can get a podcast. Pretty simple. So, uh, from myself and Darius, have a very good Matt. week. Day. And, um, week. And, and our next live podcast, like we say, the next live cast will be on Sunday, the 15th of May. Yeah, so in we'll see the you. next six days. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll see you later, guys. Toodaloo!